Here we're going to take a look at some of the fittings and thread types that are commonly used in hydraulic systems. We'll be talking about how to measure them and identify them um, when you're working with hydraulics. So we're going to begin by starting with one of the original um, sealing types. It's actually not recommended for use in hydraulics anymore, but it is still commonly used. And that would be pipe thread, or sometimes um, there's another style known as NPTF, National Pipe Tapered Fuel. Now, NPT, National Pipe Thread, and National Pipe Tapered Fuel are slightly different. Um, National Pipe Tapered Fuel actually has an interference fit between the two parts that's designed to provide proper sealing, where Pipe Thread doesn't have that inter interference fit and will require the use of a sealant. Now, we have some examples of Pipe Thread on the table before us. Uh, when you're working with these fittings, you're going to be dealing with both male and female thread. One of the ways you can tell the difference is male thread is going to have external threads, female thread or the female connection will have internal threads. Now with these, you can measure the threads to determine the fitting size. We're going to be using this Eaton booklet um, available in the link below and the page numbers on the slide behind me. When you measure the threads, make sure you're measuring on top of the threads, not between them, but you actually want to measure on top. And we'll, we'll hold this here so you can see it on the camera. Find the widest part. When we look at this, we're measuring 1.644. If we open up our booklet to the section on pipe thread, it shows a nice picture of our uh, male thread as well as our female thread connection. And if we follow the male thread column down, we find the corresponding size. We measured 1.644. I see we have a 1.66, which is the closest. If we follow that across, this is a dash 20 or inch and a quarter pipe. We could do the same thing with the female thread. We would um, use a dial caliper once again, measure inside on the threads. And here we come up with 1.480 follow down on our female column, and we can see the closest uh, measurement size is 1.58, and once again, it's inch and a quarter or a dash 20 thread. You'll see pipe used in different sizes. Now, one uh, unique thing with pipe thread, you can use raw pipe stock and actually use a die to cut pipe thread, or they drill a hole and use a pipe tap to cut internal threads, so it is versatile that way. Um, it is strong, durable, it um, can withstand impact better than some of the other connections, better than a hose that would be pinched or tubing that could be easily dented. Um, but it is, as I said before, one of the uh, least recommended types because it is prone to leaks. It is prone to vibration problems. Because of that, you want to make sure you always use some type of sealant. Uh, thread tape is a common seal. Now when you use that, you want to make sure you apply it only to the male threads and not on the very top or the very first thread because you don't want any of that thread sealing or, or tape in this case to get into the system. So you would wrap several wraps around there working your way down, but not on that first thread. Um, there is liquid pipe dope or thread sealing as well, uh, sometimes a paste type form. You could paste that on, but same thing, avoid the first threads because we do not want to contaminate the hydraulic system. Another downfall of pipe connections, um, you can see here with this 90 that I have. When you're threading it together and tightening it, there is not any type of specific torque spec. It is typically just tight enough that it doesn't leak. So if I'm tightening, the, tightening this and I want this 90 to face this direction, if it isn't quite tight enough here, I'm going to have to go another full turn to get the tightness I want, which in some cases could be um, rather excessive. So unfortunately, it can be very difficult to get components to aim exactly where you want. We will see that some of these other hydraulic fittings have better options when it comes to that situation. So that is um, National Pipe Tapered Fuel Thread. The next hydraulic connection we're going to talk about is NPSM, National Pipe Straight Mechanical. Now this is very similar to pipe thread, um, similar dimensions, except that the pipe doesn't need to be tapered, it can be straight, uh, a little different than pipe thread. Now what is different about these is that the threads no longer do the sealing. What we have is we have an internal chamfer on the male connections that will provide opportunity for sealing. And on the female connection, we have a raised, I like to call it a cone type seat that sticks up at a 30 degree angle that will then seat with that chamfer, creating a sealing surface. 
Now, some pipe thread connections can be used for either NPTF or NPSM. This here would be an example. Um, it's a regular, you know, national pipe tapered fuel thread, but inside here we have that chamfer that would allow it to seal with NPSM. Some advantages of NPSM, well, first of all, we do not need to use any type of thread sealant to get this connection to seal. It's performed by the mechanical sealing between the cone and the chamfer. The other is that example I gave with 90s and getting something to a component to aim where you want it to. Here, the female connection will often incorporate a swivel, allowing it to be positioned any direction and tightened to um, the desired tightness. So you don't have to judge, well, do I want to go a full turn tighter or is this tight enough? This one you can get exactly as tight as you want and accomplish your sealing. So if you, one of the things that you can usually recognize this by is the cone in the bottom here. It's inverted. It sticks up. All of the other hydraulic fittings, if they have a, uh, a seat in there, it sticks in. It is not coned outward. So that is unique to our NPSM connections. Now one of the next fittings we're going to talk about is commonly found on heavy equipment hydraulic systems, and that is our JIC, or sometimes called JIC 37 degree connection. The JIC is going to recall, uh, rely on a mechanical seal again. It uses a 30 degree flare, sorry, 37 degree flare here um, that is going to connect between the male and female connections. Now, um, it provides good sealing. It will also incorporate the swivel similar to the other and can be tightened up. It does not require the use of any type of thread sealant because it is a mechanical type seal. Now, sometimes uh, it can be hard to identify between this and the next fitting that we'll talk about just because they look the same but have a slightly different angle. Um, in your learning guide, there is instructions on how to create a gauge. There are also commercially available gauges, but what you can use this gauge for is if we take a connection and we hold it up, you can slide it over against and see if it matches up to the taper. This one matches up very nicely with that 37 degree flare. If I do it on the other side, this is at a 45 degree angle, and you'll see that it doesn't quite match up. There is a, there's a gap in there. So this confirms that this is JIC 37 degree. If you have one known fitting, if you hold the other one up and put them face to face, if they're the same angle, they will be parallel to each other. If they are different angles, they will be at a different angle here and confirm that they're not the same. It won't tell you which is which, but if they are parallel, you can at least confirm they are the same seat type. JIC 37, as I said, is commonly used in hydraulic systems and on heavy equipment. The next one we're going to look at is SAE 45, uh, which is found more on our automotive and truck applications. Our next connection is the SAE 45. Looks very similar to the JIC. The only difference is that we have a different sealing angle. We're at a 45 degree instead of a 37 degree. These are commonly used on um, fuel system applications, air brakes, um, some refrigeration or air conditioning. More found on our heavy trucks and automotive type applications. Not typically with hydraulics, but possibly on a dump truck. You may find them using this type of connection. Once again, if you created this gauge, you can use that to hold up and compare the angles. We'll see that it doesn't quite match up with the 37, but when we put it across to the 45, it seats nicely, confirming that this is a 45 degree flare on this end. Now, I do want to mention that these fittings, they will have different styles on either end. Each end can have its own style. So below here, this is not SA45, we'll be covering this next, but the 45 degree flare is a mechanical connection and once again no thread sealants needed because it seals with that flare. I will also mention that um, these 45 degree flare fittings are often made in brass. Brass is a softer metal. It is not suitable for high pressure hydraulics and I have never seen a JIC 37 connection made in brass so I will tell you if you encounter a brass fitting with a flare like this then you can be pretty well assured that it is a 45 degree flare. It is certainly not the 37 degree flare meant for hydraulics. So um, that would be one giveaway. Now they are, J, uh, sorry, SA45 does come in steel as well. They're not all brass, but if it's brass, we know it is SA45 and not JIC. Now our next connection we'll talk about is O-ring boss. 
O-ring boss, like its name, performs sealing with an O-ring. The O-ring is going to be at the base of the male thread. So when you replace these, you have to slide it over the threads. It has straight threads, and the O-ring will seal at the bottom. Now, the female connection for O-ring boss, I've, I've actually never seen it on a hose. They're typically used on housings, pumps, valves. Here we have a cutaway of a valve, and you can see that we have O-ring boss fittings threaded in here. You can see the O-ring in here. It's going to seal in an internal chamfer um, that is at the top of the threads or the very beginning of the threads that's going down to create the seal. Now, O-ring boss connections use a special size O-ring. It's not found in a normal O-ring assortment. So make sure if you are working with this, you are using the proper size O-rings or you have a kit specific for O-ring boss fittings. You'll notice that the kit has the O-rings labeled by the dash size of the fittings. Another important thing to note with O-ring boss fittings, to overcome that situation with pipe thread, where we have to be careful to get the angle in the correct place, the ones that have a 90 or a 45 will have an adjustable jam nut. That will allow you to turn the fitting, aim it where you want, and then torque it or tighten it by tightening the jam nut. With that, when you take these fittings loose, um, it's very common that you begin to turn them and maybe you start with the jam nut, but it, soon le it quickly loosens the whole fitting and it comes out. When you reinstall them, before you put them in place, back off the jam nut. That is going to allow the O-ring to go down in the recessed area. Then you'll tighten the fitting in, no thread sealing again. We have an O-ring to do the sealing. Aim it where you want and then tighten the jam nut to specifications. These do have um, generally recognized torque specifications for our O-ring boss connections. The next type of connection we're going to talk about is O-ring face seal, sometimes abbreviated ORS, O-ring seal or ORFS. Now, O-ring face seal uses one of the smallest O-rings, and it is on the front or flat edge of that fitting, on the face of it. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but whenever you disturb one of these um, fittings that uses an O-ring, you do need to replace the O-ring. The female connection with O-ring face seal uses a flat-faced um, type of seal, uh, or not seal, but flat-faced metal sealing area, and a swivel nut. When you tighten these together, that small O-ring will get pinched between there and provide sealing. I mentioned it is the smallest O-ring we encounter, but yet this type of connection has some of the highest pressure capabilities, upwards of 6,000 PSI in many situations. You can find them used on steel lines, not just hoses, um, but you always recognize the O-ring face seal by the O-ring on the very front of it. They also have a specified torque specification. And do remember when you're installing these, Make sure that O-ring stays in place. It is a special sized O-ring, so you should have a proper kit. You can match it up by the dash size. It will typically want to stay in place, but you could use grease or uh, better yet, petroleum jelly to hold that O-ring, maybe a light coat of oil. You probably shouldn't use grease um, to hold that fitting in place while you tighten it up. Make sure it doesn't fall out of there. That is one of the common reasons that um, perhaps a technician was installing it, the O-ring fell out and now the fitting leaks. So you want to make sure that O-ring stays in place while you properly secure it, and it should provide good, proper sealing in the hydraulic system. All right, the last fitting we're going to be talking about, our last style, is our four-bolt flange. Now, four-bolt flange, in some ways, is similar to O-ring face seal in that the O-ring is, again, on the front face of the male connection. But we'll notice, or you'll notice that the male connection has no threads on it. This is four-bolt flange. It is secured to the female connection using four bolts and flanges, sometimes a split flange, or in some cases, it may have uh, just a solid piece of metal with the four holes, and that is going to retain that. Now, when you're measuring these connections, to measure the male connection, you would measure on the outer diameter here to get your size. Now, there are different categories. There's this um, code 61, code 62, which refer to pres different pressure capabilities. CAT uses their own thickness, different thickness flanges um, in there that's going to be just a little thicker, a little stronger. I also believe they use a different style, a, a square cut O-ring instead of a round O-ring. The female connection can be recognized or identified that it will have threads, um, internal threads. Remember we said our female connections have internal threads. This is no exception. Um, you may see this was cut off of a line. You will find this type of connection on lines. You'll also, also find it on uh, valve bodies or pumps as well.
To measure the female connection or determine the size, one of the best ways is going to be measuring across the, the bolt holes and basically get center to center measurement or one edge to the other. And that should easily allow you to match it up to the proper dash size to determine the O-ring and torque specifications for the four bolts. When you tighten these connections, make sure that you're tightening those bolts evenly in an X or star-shaped pattern. Um, you don't want to take one bolt down to torque before the others. It can cause that um, to tilt and cause a leak out of the O-ring. You want to make sure it's tightened evenly and squarely. But this is your four bolt flange connection. Now we didn't mention anything with uh, metric hydraulic fittings. There's a variety of those as well. Sometimes it dep depends whether they're German fittings or Japanese fittings, but these are the common American style fittings that you'll see used in hydraulics.